Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Christian Harloff. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Collider Movie Talk. We are so excited. It's going to be a lot of silliness, I'm sure, too. And we're working on the mobile issue. Don't worry. It is being worked on right now. We heard we heard the voice. We're listening to it. Also here, John Schnepp. Yeah, that mobile issue is really upsetting me, too. What are you talking about? Don't yeah, I'll find about out about it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, what's going on? No, I know about the mobile issue. I know what's up. We'll figure also it out. here is Mark Ellis. There's so many mobile issues in the world that we need to... <laughs> everybody just come together. Your galaxies, your iPhones, your uh, jitterbugs. Everybody unite. <laughs> Jitterbug. What? It's an old person. Jitterbug. <laughs> All right, Ashley, what's up? All right, one of Stephen King's most popular novels is finally on its way to the big screen after many years in development hell. The Dark Tower, King's story of a hero named the gunslinger and his nemesis, the man in black, has officially been cast with Idris Elba as Roland the gunslinger and Matthew McConaughey as his foe, the man in black. The movie will be directed by Nikolai Arcel. In a recent interview with him and King for Entertainment Weekly, Arcel confirmed the casting. The film is set to begin shooting in under two months in South Africa with a release date of January 13, 2017. Christian, what are your thoughts on Idris Elba as the gunslinger and Matthew McConaughey as the villain? Well, I'm starting to rethink my stance on January movies because there's <laughs> like, there's so many announcements of movies that are coming out in January with Blade Runner and now, and now this movie too because... I, I'm not going to go, oh, I'm nervous because it comes out in January. I, there's been so much on this movie. because, And also, it's January 2017. Mm -hmm. So they're choosing. It's not like if, if they're saying it's coming out January 2000, uh, it, you know, oh, I guess that's the only... It's, mm. We have a year. We have a year, though. We have a year as far for them to be able to do this. And they want to put all their... If it was coming out in, like, the end of the year, like, rushed, then I'd be nervous. But the fact that they're taking their time with it, and they've been talking about it for so long. Sure, it's been in development. Ron Howard, yeah, all these man. other people. And, and to get McConaughey as the villain, that's awesome to see. This is just shows you more. Yeah. We're still in the reconnaissance because he is taking these roles that are challenging him. He's not just going to play the good guy every time. We know that he can play the smooth dude. Let's yeah. see him play a villain. And it's nice to see Idris Elba have this lead role as the gunslinger. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, uh, yeah, s sign me up for this one. Uh, I love it. I yeah. I love that Matthew McConaughey playing the man in black, also Walter Paddock, alias Randall Flagg. It's all connected. Basically, Stephen King in The Dark Tower was able to pull a lot of characters from a lot of his other books, most famously The Stand. And I remember that, that Matthew McConaughey was rumored many months ago to be playing Randall Flagg. He's actually the same character. They just call him something different, Walter uh. Paddock or the, or the man in black. But he's basically playing Randall Flagg. And if, if you've read The Stand, one of the most chilling, for me at least, of the of the Stephen King's move, uh, books, uh, I, I highly recommend reading it, but The Dark Tower is also really fun. They've done a great Marvel adaptation with incredible artwork, so I'm really excited. I'm glad they finally got this off, and Idris Elba also, incredible cast. What, what's the tone? Is it, is it, is it kind of horror-based? Is it thriller? I mean, what's, what's the... It's definitely horror based. Yeah. I mean, it's like his mythology. It's all it's, it's like kind of tying in a lot of his books. You had asked me earlier, like it's, it doesn't have every single book. It's not like I don't think the lawnmower man shows up. He's like, I'm going to eat grass <laughs> right. or thinner. It's like, right. oh, I'm feeling a little chubby. I'm Get out of here. Clown over right. here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Where's Cujo? I don't know if they fit everything in there, but it's so, you know, everything that matters of his, his mythology is in the dark. Tower, I think that so. Randall Flagg did have a pet he buried in a cemetery and then did come back to life. Hopefully that plays into this somehow. But it's a hard concept, but it's not like a jump scary horror movie it's more if anything i'd compare more to the witch than paranormal activity mm -hmm. because it's a it's a brooding psychological tale as well and opening this thing january 2017 makes a lot of sense first of all you get the hell out of the way that monster known as mighty morphin power rangers coming out in march of 2017 and also it's not the easiest film to sell to the public in say the summertime or during oscar season i know you got big stars in it but january is the perfect landing spot for a dark tower movie i'd like to go back to the january thing though too do you think one of the reasons because we have heard like a lot over the last two weeks on this show we've mm -hmm. been talking about these movies that normally you wouldn't imagine would be opening up in january right do you think schnepp that's because we're getting so many comic book movies next year right there's and we're getting movies now that drop in march we got six of them yeah coming I mean, out. but look i mean so and the, and there's just so much real estate from now you'd say even in february if you want to count like what dead where deadpool opens say february up until december is this they put movies now out in January because this is really the only place for them to go and they're going to try to get rid of the stink of January? I I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think the stink of any of the months are in, in existence anymore be, just because of the way everything else besides movies.
movies has changed. Our viewing habits via Netflix or Hulu or Amazon, using cell phones to watch things, everything is completely different. Movies are still the same, but now people are like more open to go see a movie. It doesn't have to be a summer release. It right. doesn't have to, there's no like built in clock. It's like, oh, that movie's out. I want to see it. I don't think it matters anymore what month it comes out. Yeah, it's competition, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it breeds more and more clones. Or if you like, if you look at it in a sports context, if you have a sports league that's making a ton of money more so than it used to, you get more teams. And in this case, we're going to get more months. January puts its pants off one leg at a time like everybody else puts its pants off. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it does that. Okay. Months put their pants on and off just like July does, just like August does. So why can't we have movies that are great year round? It used right. to be that studios want to save their money. They do their big advertising push for Oscars or big holiday movies at the end of December. And then they just want to save. They want to be very, very tight with their wallets. That's not going to be the case anymore because some studio is going to come along and make good movies in January. And you're going to want to compete with those movies to get people to see your movie. This makes total sense to me. I'm excited. All right. What's next? One of the most anticipated non-superhero sequels in the works is John Wick Chapter 2, with Keanu Reeves reprising his role as John Wick. In an interview with IGN, Reeves talked a bit about Chapter 2, which sees his seasoned hitman traveling to Rome. Reeves said, For us, it was just, what is the next chapter? What is the continuation of this story? Opening up the world, the underground world. The world behind the world in terms of the assassins. Kind of evolving the action. If the first one was a black belt, then this one is is third degree black belt. It's such a fun project and a great character. The film recently finished shooting and is set to arrive in theaters nationwide in 2017. Schnapp, are you excited to see what Reeves has in store for us in John Wick Chapter 2? I certainly am. I I, uh, I really loved John Wick. I loved, I didn't like the, the dog situation, but you know, that's kind of the, was the catalyst yeah. to bring John Wick back. And they're like, you don't want this guy coming back, you know? And that was kind of the fun of seeing those trailers, like just the buildup of who is this character. Keanu's had an up and down career for the last few and like we're really, uh, I, I have my Myself, was really happy to see him return to form to playing this kind of a character that he's really good at he's also really good in the Bill and Ted he's he's got that comedic side but he's also really good at playing a badass and man he's a badass and this is dome shots it's incredible the choreography alone is worth seeing it to see this kind of action we're we're gonna talk about dome shots later when we talk about equilibrium that's coming up but this Man, John Wick 2, third degree black belt, bring it. I can't wait. I am so with you, man. I am. These comments were great. This doesn't just seem like a dude who's just selling the movie about trying to get people excited because he is that type of actor when he's so invested. You saw what he, how invested he was in the first one, all mm -hmm. the behind the scenes and, the, and by doing all the stunts and, and everything that he did in that first film. But to say not only the, the third degree black belt, which is the Fucking awesome comment. Right. Um, the the first thing that he said about the world behind the world. Totally. That's what we wanted to see because they set it up so well with the assassins. With the that continental hotel. man, that yeah. was so cool. And like to, for him to say this is a cool character, and we're gonna get more into this world. Good because that I don't want to just say I want to see the cool action. Sure. That's absolutely one of the prices of mission. That's what you want to see. But you want more, especially if you're going to try to keep doing more of these movies. And then they're, they're going to shoot it what in Italy, I think, or Rome. Uh, yeah. Rome. So they're going to shoot it in Rome. And for them to now even extend this more, this this world behind the world. Oh, man, I am so excited for this film. It's going to be in my most anticipated for Definitely. 2017. Yeah, it was the first thing that popped in my head when I read these comments was the Continental. Now, But if we're shooting like overseas, is there a chain of Continentals? Is right. there like a Holiday Inn? <laughs> I haven't been this excited to go back to a hotel since I saw Trump Plaza in Home Alone 2. It's that level of awesome. Just going to that hotel and seeing all the stories you can tell. I hope we get a little bit more into that world, but also we want to see what John Wick is up to. And if anything else could possess this man to go on the rampage that he did in the first First one. Did he get a pet hamster? What is he doing in this one <laughs> right, that somebody's right. going to take away from him that is going to make him so PO'd that he's got to get back into action? Uh, I hope that's not the case, actually. I know <laughs> no, no animals no, at all. Yeah, no, no I, animals. I Two want, dogs, no. I want him to. I want, he accepted what who he was in the last movie. Yeah. He accepted. I just want him to be back in the game. I don't think we need another, like, oh, this time you didn't. Oh, someone stepped on my shoe. I got to kill them now. No, it's I agree like, with you. He's, he's colder <laughs> and he's back and he's like in that. Rome and he's at the Continental <laughs> in Rome taking on a new mission. Yeah. They just begin it 
fucking right like that. That's Damn, it. I'm in. Yeah, man, the anti-hero Mission Impossible, but totally. he's but he's a, a crazy assassin. That's great. I, oh man, I love this. You know what? Maybe there's a mobile issue that he's got to fix. He's, he's got to get into some tech world yeah, deep in the continental. Why and can't I watch movies yeah. on my phone? He's got a dome shot, a bunch of fucking cell phones. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, all right, it's time for buy and sell. If you don't know what that is, you've never watched his show. But if you are brand new, Ashley's going to read out some more of the topics in the world of movies, and we're just going to say if we buy or sell it. Ashley, what's up first? Pixar and Disney released their newest trailer for Finding Nemo sequel, Finding Dory. In Finding Dory, everyone's favorite forgetful blue fish, Dory, with her friends Nemo and Marlin, are on a search to find out who her parents are. Directed by the original director of Finding Nemo, Andrew Stanton, the film features the voices of Ellen DeGeneres, Albert Brooks, Ed O'Neill, Caitlin Olsen, Ty Burrell, Eugene Levy, and Diane Keaton. Finding Dory opens in theaters June 17, 2016. Mark Byers saw the newest trailer for Pixar's Finding Dore. Oh, well, before I tell you my answer, I'll let you know that Ashley and I are of the same mind because we actually did a trailer reaction slash review for Finding Dory not 30 minutes ago. It's about to be up live on the Collider YouTube channel, so you can check it out there. And spoiler alert, we really liked it. And this this trailer sold me in a way that I was not sold on Finding Dory before. That's what I like getting out of a trailer because, like, you know it's Pixar. They do great work almost every time, Brave. But seeing this... At D23, I was like, um, I just don't know what we're going for here, guys. You're taking an ancillary character, a funny sidekick, and putting them into the spotlight. I'm not sure how that's going to play out over the course of a 90-minute film. Ashley, in our review, brought up Minions. And I thought that while they had every uh, chance to make a great movie on their own, it didn't work out that way. That's how I pronounce Minions. <laughs> minions. I say Minions. Minions. The minions. The They're minions. not Minions. They're not Minions. They're Minions. minions. They're minions. Oh, has anybody seen a Dory's Minions are going to be helping her on this mission. You get a hammerhead shark in there. You get a funny octopus scene that almost kills itself at the end. So... I really, really like this trailer. Now I want to see this movie, whereas before I was like, eh. man, I got to sell it. Um, I, it's I lo look finding that finding great speech. It was a great speech, but you, you threw minions in there and lost me. But look, for me, I love Finding Nemo, one of my top Pixar movies of all time. It looks like it's going to be the same movie. It mm -hmm. looks like the same movie, like every everything from getting trapped into a, a, a dentist office almost or wherever she's trapped to it just seems like she, they're, they're riding on the turtles and everything, too. It might be a fun movie. It just might be a rehash. I'm just worried that we might get Cars 2 or the, the, the Monsters University. It's just the sequels haven't really worked great yet. Um, I think it was fine. I, I certainly want to see it. I don't think it looks like a stinker. It just looks like the same movie that I've seen before. Now, that might be a, an okay thing because, for example, my daughter has seen the first movie, but she's not like obsessed with it. So if I take her to see it, maybe Finding Dory is the one that she right. really wants to see it. She's four. She's going to love it. I think kids will love it. I just didn't. It didn't wow me. Yep. Yeah, I have to echo your sentiments. I soft sell it. It's like yeah, a, it's a soft yeah. sell. tainted <laughs> manions. Yeah. Uh, I pronounce it manions. That's how I call them. So manions, love them. The little yellow guys, manions. Yeah, minions. anyway, manions, Mark. Um, <laughs> the, I saw it on the same the same basis. I really literally felt like I was having deja vu. I was like, I think I saw this movie. It was called Finding Nemo, but it's like. I love the animation, all the new creatures. I love the octopus. I had a smile on my face while I was watching and having the deja vu feeling the entire time. So that's why I'm soft selling it. I think the film is going to be really entertaining. Yeah. It's going to be fun. The entire voice cast, starting with Helen, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, everyone in it is great. It just felt like I've, it feels very close to what I've already seen. So maybe being this being the first trailer, the first official long trailer, they're just showing you little clips, and there's a lot more to the story that they're not going to give away, and that's what I'm hoping. And, and look, I totally respect your guys' opinion. I'm not going to disagree with you too much. I hope one day you can rescue your souls from the pit of hell, because this movie is very, very cute. And you do get a different spin on it. Whereas Monsters U was a flashback, yeah, sure. and Cars 2 was just another adventure where they didn't really learn that much about themselves, Dory is going to discover what her past is, and I think that's a key to her character going forward. I love that shark meant a lot in this trailer. I might not have bought this if I didn't see that cute shark and it being like, no, we used to be friends. And right. all of a sudden, I was hooked. 35 year old adult Mark Ellis was like, I got to get in there and see what's going on in her past. I'm excited. You you can definitely do Look, sequels have worked for Pixar as well, too. Toy Story 2 and Story, Toy Story 3 are arguably mm -hmm. some of the best ones yeah. that they've done, movies in general, not just sequels. So it's possible. I just. 
I still I, I agree with Schnapp. I think this movie's going to be entertaining. I think it could be a lot of fun. It's just a matter of whether or not it's going to do what Pixar does so well, and that's right. like, oh, they just they changed the game on this one. Every time they put it out, look what they did with Inside Out. I mean, when you watch Inside Out, like that movie, to me, it's 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 brand new. There's a reason why some people will say it should have been nominated for Best Picture, not just Best Animated, and obviously won for that. But I hope Finding Dory is awesome. I am rooting for it. I'm just telling you this trailer. Eh. Fine, you know what? I'll take your daughter to see the movie. That's no. what we'll I'm do. on your side, Mark. I'm on your side. <laughs> hey, I'm on the Manion side. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> care what side you guys are on. They're t- they're going to rescue me from hell. All right, so make all sure. all eight thousand yellow friends, the Minonians. Yeah, the Manions. Minonians. Yeah, the Minonians. Yeah, the Minonians. Uh, Minonians. Guys, Minonians. Before we go on to our next topic, again, make sure that you go and watch <sighs> Ashley and Mark the trailer reaction reviews. If you didn't see both Schnepp and Ellis doing Ice Age, what's it? Ice drift, <laughs> Chillology. Drift, 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 drifting yeah. continental drifts. Find my nuts. Yeah, right, find, Ice Age. Snap all over the place. Yeah. So, Wooly Mammoth, uh, there we go. What do you got, Ashley? What's next? A new trailer has been released for Terrence Malick's Night of Cups, which stars Christian Bale as a screenwriter who is a slave to the Hollywood system, addicted to the success, but simultaneously despairing the emptiness of his life. The film co stars Natalie Portman, Kate Blanchett, and Wes Bentley. The newest trailer features a longer look at the movie with additional music scored by famous DJ Diplo. Christian, do you buy or sell the new look at Malick's? Night of Cups. I do buy this. Um, it looks crazy. It looks like a Terrence Malick movie for sure. It's he's either you either love Malick or you can't watch it. And I, I understand both sides. I'm happen to be on uh, the love it side. Uh, but this trailer, I love the music of it. I have no idea really what it's about. It's most Malick movies, but it, it I like the way that it was cut in with the music too. I love the cast. Anytime you have Bale in there, you're going to make me go, well, okay, what's he working on next? Then mm-hmm. you put Malik's name next to it. It's certainly something that you're going to want to see if you're a, a, a film lover in general, a Bale fan, and a Malik fan, obviously. So I'm going to buy this trailer. How about you, Mark? I buy it, and I can't believe I'm saying it because I'm so confused as to what actually is going to happen in this movie. We were telling stories at the pre-production meeting about how this guy made this particular movie right. and how he does in general. I have my own very unique, it's not creepy, but it's just a weird Terrence Malick interaction that I had when I was first out here in, in Hollywood. He recruited me to do something that was like, go work with an actress for the new world, and it was just like a weird total mind F experience that I'll share with you guys at some other date. For this movie in particular, it does Look, the cast alone is going to get me in there. And Terrence Malick, regardless of what you want to say about how he makes his films, the last few, Tree of Life is something I'm still wondering if I liked it or not. And uh, To the Wonder is something that I did not want to like when I was walking in there. I was dreading seeing this movie. I saw it by myself. And I ended up really enjoying it. So against its own odds, I think that Night of Cups could be a movie that really shocks me. Mm. Yep. I really, I, I, When I saw this trailer, I was like, Jesus Christ, I love Terrence Malick. I love... I love all of the films that he's made because he's not afraid to take risks all the way from back. If you go back to Sissy Spacek and Charlie Sheen in Badlands all the way to right now with Night of Cups, it feels like true experimental filmmaking. And I like the story that you guys were telling me at the pre-production meeting. One of the actors was like, I don't know what was going on. He handed me a thing and said, I'm I'm a dragon. I wash cups or whatever it was. Thomas Lennon. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, whatever the weird phrase was, like, do you want me to say that? He was like, I don't care. Do whatever you want. It's very experimental. It's free form. And that's what Ter- that's where Terrence Malick is at now. And I want to hear your story about The New World because that's a film that had a script, but it was a little more free floating. He's always been able to try like, I mean, uh, what's not the uh, the thin red line? I think yeah, that's a yeah. yeah I mean, a, the entire character arcs were cut out. I mean, there's people who are like I was there for five months. I had 30 pages of script. I'm not in the movie. I mean, that's the kind of experience you're going to have if you're an actor or you're working in a Terrence Malick on a Terrence Malick production. You could be uh, I was on set for like three months and we shot every scene. I'm not in the movie. You're like, what is going on? He's creating this like 10 hour epic and he just like, here's the two hours that you can have. You're yeah. like, what is it? That's the exciting part for me, at least to see a Terrence Malick film. Can I say I was like a thousand times in a tree of life that I absolutely love the film? No, but I liked what he was trying to do with it and I cannot wait to see Night of Cups. Yeah, the experimental stuff. I mean, Lennon, Thomas Lennon was talking about it and he said he was getting into an argument with his wife on the phone and then he looks over and Malick's got the like, camera right in his face and he's like, oh, what do, yeah. what do I do? So he started like going farther in, like, really hyping up the argument and apparently it's in the film that's so amazing so, uh, like stuff like that is amazing um yeah and i saw a comment in there it's just like wait a minute harlock you're buying this but you're selling fighting dory what's yeah. going on <laughs> i'm just telling you i'm looking and i'm looking at the trailer and to me this is a little different i'm not telling you that you have to go ahead and feel the same way but for me something new 
respond. I responded to it. So I apologize. Yeah, kids, you. you don't have to apologize yeah. for nothing, Harloff. It's called an opinion. That's right. Ah! What if the commenter sound didn't sound like that? What if he was like, hey, Harloff? Right. That's right. How could you Can't believe sell it. Fine and Dory? I think that hey. What if he sounded like that? I think that Fine and Dory was great. How hey. could you possibly sell it? <laughs> and I appreciate it. Look, I, I love Finding Nemo, and I hope Finding Dory is great, but we're not talking about that. Yes. Was next. Uh, having just wrapped Rogue One for Disney and Lucasfilm, Diego Luna looks to be headed to another sci-fi franchise. According to the rap, Luna is in negotiations to star opposite Ellen Page in Sony's reimagining of the 1990 sci-fi thriller Flatliners. The original movie follows a group of medical students who experiment with near-death experiences that involve past tragedies until the dark consequences begin to jeopardize their own lives. There is no release date as of yet. Schnett Byers sell another Flatliners Liners with Diego Luna and Ellen Page. I could not sell this fast enough. I could not. <laughs> I sold it the second I read it. I was like, I'm selling this. Uh, remember that movie that came out last year, Lazarus Effect with Olivia Wilde? That was the remake that Ooh. shouldn't have happened with Flatliners. And you, that's exactly what you saw. It was like a, a dead on arrival type of a film. You're like, oh, don't play with dead things. Kids shouldn't play with bringing people back from the dead. Weird spooky demon. I'm possessed. People floating around. I have weird black eyes. Same thing. I mean, what are they going to do with this? The first one was directed by Joel Schumacher. It had a bunch of like weird lens flares and cool smoke fog machines and lighting. And it was all like blue light. That's all. I, that's what I remember. It's like, look, Kiefer Sutherland's dead. It's like, no, he's back. Weird lights and stuff. I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> 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 you just you were going you, you had it was like it was like, you, you really were selling that yeah. opinion like, yeah. hey, you know what you you I don't want to yeah. I feel ah. like a teacher like grading John little John Schnepp on his book report it's like he actually had a very good Jim Mr. No. Schnepp sit down sit down no, uh, I just I can't say any more about it. I sell it uh, I I'm gonna buy it. Uh, I am going to buy this. I actually think this could be a cool remake. Uh, I understand from being a 90s guy to where you're watching these movies. It was a cool, it was a crazy thrill. Julia Roberts was r just rising, being a superstar sure. in that film too. Keith Sutherland, really creepy movie. I remember seeing that and being like, this is, this is a, it was a really well done film back then. It was, I think Joel Schumacher's, I mean, it's a dated now, but at the time, pretty sure. good. I think now with Diego Luna and Ellen Page, you, you know, she's kind of done this, a bit in the Inception world. It's, it's, it's similar. Sure. But to see this as a horror film now, I actually think this is... I'm, I'm not always the guy... I'm usually against a lot of remakes. I think this is up for a remake. I think this could be really cool. Once a remake of Flatliners hates Finding Dory, I'm also <laughs> going to buy this. Because, look, I love the first Flatliners. I remember seeing it when I was a kid and being like, this thing is so spooky. It's not a straight-up horror movie, which is what they did try to do with Lazarus Effect, which was as much Pet Cemetery as Flatliners. And they totally missed the boat on that one. I'll agree with you, Schnepp. But Flatliners is a premise that is just so rich in the way you can update that for modern medical technology, as well as just idealistic young doctors. I mean, when you look at the way our world is right now in a... In, in terms of, of, of may, maybe curing diseases or being so close to finding the answers deep inside our bodies, having people want to push the next level makes a lot more sense now than it did even in like 1990 or 91 when the first Flatliners came out. Plus, when you have a cast like Ellen Page and Diego Luna, they're not just signing up to do some cheesy horror movie for kicks and have a lot of jump scares. They want to get into this material, sink their teeth into this content. So I agree with you, man. I am a minion of Flatliners. What if the first trailer is like, they brought something back. <laughs> <laughs> like weird alien lights I, and stuff. I am not like, telling you that I'm not going to sell this trailer right. if it looks like garbage, but I will tell you. By the premise of yeah, it. Yeah, man. And, and we also don't know who's directing it, sure. and, and it depends on what team is producing it. But so far, when you tell me like Diego Luna is going to be in I know some people are hit and miss on Ellen Page. I happen to like Ellen Page, and I think that the two of them, I think it could be up for really a good remake. So we'll see. All right, now it's that time for Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at AMC Theaters. We're talking about movies from 10 years ago and 20 years ago. Ashley, do you want to talk about 10 years ago, 20 um, years ago? What do we got? Sure. 16 Blocks, Aquamarine, Ultraviolet, Dave Chappelle's Block Party. And 20 years ago, we had Dawn Periscope, which was Kelsey Grammer. Um, not so great. Up Close and Personal, the Robert Redford, Michelle Pfeiffer vehicle, and the classic Bloodsport 2 with Daniel Bernhardt 
and the late great Pat Morita. Um, I can say that I never saw Bloodsport too. Uh, uh, it was in limited release, and then it went right to VHS. So uh, where it lives comfortably now. Uh, the the one for me, I think that I remembered Down Periscope. I mean, when that movie came out, it's it's one of those silly spoofs that it's it's not great. I have no idea in hell what the hell Aquamarine is. Um, as, and I, I don't know what any of these things are, except Dave Chappelle's Block Party. I remember, I can't believe it's 10 years ago. A really mm. cool movie. And that was like when Dave Chappelle was at his height yeah. when he was doing his show. And, and right before that whole thing happened where he just kind of walked away from it all. So I definitely remember that. And then 16 Blocks, I remember being excited for that movie and then being disappointed. So it wasn't a lot of great stuff. I think that out of all these, I would say that Dave Chappelle's Black, Block Party is, is the one. Yeah, right on. For me, it's ultraviolet. Now, I love Mia, and this film was the very next film that Kurt Wimmer, who had done Equilibrium, right. which had gun, gun oh, fu, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that movie. Christian Bale, uh -huh. it was like Fahrenheit 451. I, I, that was such a fun, exciting film. I remember, like, it was playing, it was only playing for like one week, Equilibrium. And I remember, like, I wasn't even living here yet, but I was working out here, and I was like, I'm going to go see Equilibrium in the theater. And then it was gone the next day. I saw it, and I was like, wow, what a fun film. So Kurt Wimmer went on to make Ultraviolet, which was. I guess kind of pulled away from him. It's supposed to be about vampires in the future and a big blood war. It's a lot of weird effects. Mia's face has got that soft focus, weird gel filter on it the whole time. There's some really cool scenarios in it. There's no blood, even though she's like cutting people with a sword. There's, it was like, we don't know what we're going to do. It should be an R rating, but make it PG-13. So the blood was, was going to be digital and then it wasn't put in. It's a weird film. I can't even really 100% recommend it, but I will say you should see it. <laughs> But it's it's a weird film, and then he went on to uh, make he did he never directed another film after that. I think TV, uh, right? well, TV. well, yeah, I think he went on to he re, he wrote uh, Point Break, the new Point Break, and the new Total Recall, some of your favorite films. Uh, so I don't know really what happened to Kurt Wimmer, other than you know I loved Equilibrium. So okay, Mark, uh, it's hard to believe that ten years ago we were at the height of Dave Chappelle's uh, show on Comedy Central. Like Chappelle's show is just such a landmark sketch comedy show, which is why Black Party could get made in the first place. It's like, oh, Dave Chappelle's putting his name on it. Yeah, let's just have a music event in New York and we'll film it and we'll release it in theaters. And actually, did a fairly good number opening weekend for what its tiny budget was twenty years ago. Down Periscope. Yeah, <laughs> that's all we got. Down Periscope is a movie that it's legendary in my family because it set the record for most late fees at video update for one <laughs> wow. movie because it was so unmemorable. My brother and I went there to go rent something else. I can't remember what we wanted, probably Independence Day or something, and then yeah. they didn't have it. So we rented Down Periscope open. It was a funny <laughs> return to form of like the spoof comedy for like Naked Gun. And we just were looking at each other during the movie. We're like, this is terrible. Yeah. So it's one of those movies that you had to be careful of when you were renting because if you forget, if you just wash away the fact that you rented this movie, it's just sitting there. My mom found it like a week and a half later. She's like, do we own this? And my brother and I are like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> so it ended up being like $25 in like. You, oh, you want to hear the only thing I know about Down Periscope? Never saw the movie. My friend wrote the render shader for the, for the underwater scenes, way, the way sand would move. Oh, it's pretty exciting, guys. Well, now I gotta yeah. rent it again. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, any of these movies? Have you seen any of them? Thankfully, I am just too young enough to have not seen. You weren't around ten years ago. <laughs> I wasn't around. I was basically a fetus like ten, oh, years, 10 ago. years ago. Oh, yeah. Interesting. All right. <laughs> so uh, weird. Yeah. You know what? I didn't ask you before we move on to mailbag too. We didn't ask you not the whole thought on finding Dory mm -hmm. because we're gonna you guys they can watch the trailer review. Out. But what did you what you liked it a lot? I thought it was cute. There's a story there, which yeah. is like kind of I guess your fear going into a movie like this that there's not going to be really a storyline you can see that Dory's trying to find her parents and it does what Pixar does best makes you want to cry and makes you want to laugh and go on at the same time so I hope that it lives up to what I hope for it yeah. to be a good movie you know yeah. it's not going to be a classic see? I, see? it's not going to be a classic but well it's done. still we, a good hey, movie it's not you know, like totally up. divided yeah. I, mean, I never said I was going to hate it yeah, I just you thought it was basically said it was awful uh, no I, you know I, I said it's deja vu <laughs> just like Dory gets deja vu yeah. she's like right. did I see this movie again actually it was right. called Finding Nemo what wait did I see this movie again actually it was called Finding Nemo you're supposed to forget that you supposed to be something different so it is kind of vice versa all right, now it's part Nine. of the show. It's mailbag time. This is where we get to hear from you guys. You guys have submitted your questions over at CollaborVideo at gmail.com. We have gone through them. We picked some out. Ashley's going to read them. But before she does, also know that we're going to be doing live Twitter questions. So make sure that you do the same thing at Collider Video. Be nice to the Movenator, and she will pick some stuff out. <laughs> now, we like to do a lot of questions here. If you want to do some behind-the-scenes stuff, those, those are always fun. If you want to do anything that you want to talk to, us about make sure that you tweet at collider video 
Now, what's up with Mailbag? Andre Costa writes, Hey, Collider crew, love this show from here in Brazil. I was wondering how Marvel is approaching the Civil War marketing campaign, and I realized that it has been a different approach so far from what they did with Age of Ultron. By this time, Age of Ultron had already two trailers and a lot of footage on those trailers. Do you think Marvel is avoiding giving us too much on the trailers? And when do you guys think the next trailer will drop? Thanks, and keep up the great work. Thank you, Andre. Uh, no, I don't. I think that they're doing it. I think this is... There's a reason. I've get, I'm getting messages on Twitter and, and on Facebook as far as what's going on with the marketing campaign for Civil War. What's coming out in a few weeks? Batman v Superman. They're not going to put anything out there right now because they don't want to get overshadowed by the release. Batman v Superman's pre-ticket sales are almost as close as The Force Awakens right now, too. What, what they're doing. Like it's, it's, you don't want to compete with this movie right now when you don't have to. It's The next trailer will come after Batman v Superman is released. Yeah, sure. It's only been about a month or so afterwards. We've gotten enough trailers. We're aware the movie's coming out. And we've always said that it's a matter of this movie, Batman v Superman, will help Civil War. Yeah. It will absolutely help because you have two heroes that you know fighting one another, two other heroes that you know fighting one another, and that's going to help. Very much so. So I think as soon as this drops, as soon as Batman v Superman drops, that is when you're going to see a full trailer. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe even before the movie. Maybe even that, that day. Maybe when you go there, that's sure. the next trailer. It would, be, it would make that would sense. Be smart. What do you think? Yeah, I would love to see a Civil War trailer before uh, before Batman v Superman. And, uh, you know, Batman v Superman has a lot of heavy lifting it has to do. It has to introduce the Justice League. The Avengers are already introduced. They've already had two movies. They've got... You know, back to back, uh, number three and four being shot. You know, in a couple months. So Captain America, you, people are calling it Avengers 2.5 or whatever. It's literally Iron Man and Captain America and all the rest of the Avengers picking sides. So it's a big film. I think it's perfectly the timing for another trailer. It'll drop Batman v Superman or maybe the next next weekend. I'm not worried about any of that. I just I'm looking forward to seeing the trailer. Right. You know, that's the thing I'm most excited about. And literally, that's like less than three weeks away. But as far as a marketing standpoint goes, you, it makes sense why Disney would hold totally. off. Totally. Right yeah. There's no reason for them. They're like, look, the next three weeks are all Batman v Superman. Believe me, they want to take a little chunk of that. They're going to take a big bite out of that like little marketing campaign. They're like, I know everyone's Batman v Superman, this and that. They might drop a trailer two days before Batman v Superman opens. Right. So. It's an interesting thought. I mean, look, I love that Batman vs. Superman is coming out, besides the fact that we get to see Batman fight Superman, because it does handcuff Marvel a little bit with their advertising, and I think that's a good thing, because the one thing you can say about Marvel, they love showing a lot of stuff in their trailers. They did it with the first Avengers. Mm -hmm. They did it with Avengers Age of Ultron. More stuff than I think is necessary to sell me on a movie that I already want to see. So with they don't have that window anymore. They don't have that six-month window to keep throwing out new trailers whenever they want and showing us whole catching Iron Man just in the nick of time so now it's got to be a little more spaced out they have to be a little more thought conscious as to when they promote their material it's a great sign <laughs> because you're going to see a lot of this stuff in April and then before we know it May what 6th yep. is going to be here yep. and we're going to be seeing Civil War and talking about how much we all love Batman versus Superman as well all right what's next Jessica writes hey Collider crew love this show and watch every day I was just wondering with all the recent changes if you guys were still going to do the March movie madness tournament this year thanks and keep up the great work Thank you, Jessica. Um, Jen Dennis and I were talking about this last night, actually. It's just, it's going to be very hard for us to do it this year just because we are so spread thin in regards to everything that we're doing. You got, I mean, Dennis announced all the stuff on Monday. We have TV talk that we're working on. That's going to be a once a week show and possibly two times a week, depending on, you know, how, how, how we start developing it. We have the horror movie show that we have coming. We have the Schmodown movie trivia. We've got the trailer reviews. We have the commentary videos. We have all these things, plus the shows that we already have with Heroes and, and Jedi Council. We have so much that we're doing right now and our, we have a great crew the crew's really working hard every day. It's just, and with Ray, Ray is our graphics guy, and he, that dude is one of the hardest workers. He's not in the room, right? Good, because I don't want him to hear me talking good about him. But he's one of the <laughs> hardest workers I have ever worked with, and the dude is so creative. It is just too much for him to do right now. There's, there's, he's just, it takes a lot of work to do all the voting and everything, mm -hmm. too. So I would love, we're, de we're definitely talking about bringing it back next year, though. Are you guys, what, what would you guys want to do? You if know we what did I would March suggest? Yeah. If we did a March Movie Madness, do one big crazy three-hour episode 
Like just set everything out, like send it out the week before everybody vote. Like a and tournament then we, on the yeah, oh, yeah, we do a vote. We just rock it all out in one episode. So what what's the what's the theme? Is it Pauly Shore movies? Is it fish movies? I mean, what do you want to go with? Shark movies? That'd be fun. Van Damme movies. Detective films. I don't know. I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Films. What? Yeah. The graphic people is one on day. it. Yeah. The films that are take place on a train. What? Yeah. Right. So, you know what would be a fun one though is, and I, I'm sure people have done this in some capacity because the bracket thing is huge. Is I just want to see because Batman versus Superman and Civil War with all those heroes fighting. Let's just take 16 heroes. It doesn't matter what universe or what comic mm. book is, team they play for. Let's just put them all in a yeah. bracket and just let the fans vote on who do you think would win that individual battle. Superman would probably show up on top, but mm. you never know. Somebody maybe the Punisher's got a kryptonite gun. All right, question for you guys: um, If when we if we do March Madness again next year. What movies would you want us to see? No, Jack Napier. We're not doing porn. Um, go ahead and look at all the ones that you want you us. You didn't even think about it. You, yes, didn't you, even, did. you didn't even consider it. What? We could do porn. You want to get fired? <laughs> Everyone, we're gonna get. Everyone's. We're gonna get canned if that happens. Dude, Hot Asian Invasion Part Seven. Well, there we go. All right, this is the last episode of Movie Talk. Uh, but we are. We want you guys to suggest the movies. Also, the other thing too. Dennis went on on Monday, I believe, and he wrote a comment in the comment section in regards to what. Should Shows that we have coming up are you guys most excited about it's a conversation we want to hear from you guys the fans are the most important to we want to hear what you guys are saying about the shows are you looking forward to the commentary videos more trailer reviews are you looking forward to the weekly tv talk a horror show the movie trivia contest where it's going to be the wwe slash ufc of movie trivia all that stuff comment we really want to hear your voice and to prove that we're even going to do twitter questions right now live twitter questions mova what are yes. they saying so first question comes from terrence fisher and they write have you guys considered that b versus s is opening easter weekend won't this bring in more at the box office and make up for the runtime schnapp what do you think I think a lot of people are going to be like having those chocolate Easter bunnies and be like, I just want to see two superheroes duke it up. <laughs> I think it's going to really be helpful. There's a lot of people aren't in school. Kids have the day, weekend off. There's everybody's family time. Everybody wants to get out of the house. Everybody's going to go see Batman v Superman. I think it's going to really help. If Mark? you're a movie theater chain, sell Cadbury eggs right next to the Milk Duds. It's the best treat you can enjoy when watching your two favorite superheroes fight. Yeah, it's a genius idea. It's why they did it. I mean, look, it's it, it because it is a longer movie. So if you have a longer runtime, you want to open it on a weekend when everybody has more access to go see whatever showtime is going to be available because a lot of these dates are going to be sold out for the first few days. I have no idea if this is why they even thought about it or just the fact that it happened to fall on that date. But because who is Superman always compared to? Jesus. It's Easter. You know, it's right. a, <laughs> so uh, who the hell knows? But I, I would probably say no. But it's it's a it's a good date for them to do it. There's, there's a little more. The people are going to go out, go to the movies. Also, it's also the week of WonderCon, mm -hmm. which where we should start talking about now. We're going to be well. These guys will be. I'm going to be out of town, but these guys will be at WonderCon. You yeah. got some cool stuff going on. At WonderCon, yeah, I'm doing right? some uh, something on Friday. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm doing. Some ju judging something, <laughs> hanging out at, on a panel, doing some crazy yeah. stuff. Nobody on nobody plugs a show. I'll be like signing Snap. pops and then. <laughs> but I can't plug this one. On Saturday at 7.30 in room 152, there's a Collider Heroes panel. So get sweaty. Get all your questions. It's going to just be an all-question hour. Get there. Ask us a bunch of stuff. It's all the people who appear on Heroes. So come on down. And make Saturday. sure you guys catch me. What's that? What's that? A meetup. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a meetup for sure. Yeah. So... We'll do it after the after the heroes. Yeah, so it's from uh, seven thirty to eight thirty, and then right after that, we'll have some kind of meetup, like meet us meet meet up next to the Angry Bird sign or whatever is going to be there. <laughs> and remember, you know? when you guys meet me, you get to ask one question. When you meet Schnepp, you can ask him like eight questions back to back to back to back. Right. He and, loves and when that I answer stuff. the questions, yeah. I only talk as a manion. Yeah, <laughs> I a banana, baka baka singa. Hello, why do you not? Not like Fimby Fimby Ellis. Ellis. What's next? Ellis. What is going on? Knows. All right, Wade Wilson. We're writes, off the rails. If you could go back in time to warn a director that they're going to make a shitty movie, who is it, and <laughs> who? How question. would you word it? Oh man, if, uh, Joel Schumacher. I need to say Batman and Robin. Everything that you fear that the studio is pushing you to do, you are correct. Uh, don't do it. 
George, you might you might hurt George Clooney a little bit more than you think you're you're going to. Um, but then again, <laughs> if he doesn't make that movie, right. I don't know if we if we get Nolan's Batman the no, way that we, we do. I don't think we, we do. I think because they, they probably because if they don't change the direction of that film, ah, that's the tenuous part of changing time. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't just be the Terminator. I, you know, if I was going to play weird games, I'd go back to Golan and Globus and be like. Hang on a second. Before you take that fourteen million dollars away from Superman for Quest for Peace, why not just not make the movie? Right. That would be my thing. Yeah. So I can go back in time and I can like just prequels? give any production advice. Yeah. I I'm I'm gonna step away from the prequels because, like you said with Batman, if we didn't get the prequels, we might not have gotten this new universe of right, Star Wars right. that we're all pretty excited right. about. I'm gonna tell them just just everybody cool down on Caddyshack too. Just go make another <laughs> movie. Right. Just we don't need to do like is Bill Murray? Gonna, no, he's not coming back. Chevy. Chase, we get him for one scene. Dangerfield's not coming. Jackie Mason replacing him. Just don't make the movie. Uh, a lot of the fans are saying Josh Trank is one to maybe stay away from Fantastic Four because I understand that because if you look at Josh Trank was like the golden boy, man. Right. He After Chronicle, and then he, hey, you know what? You're so great. Not only are you going to be doing this Fantastic Four movie, kid, you're going to get in the next Star Wars movie. And then the, all the news comes out and like, oh, yeah, we're going to take back that Star Wars movie. So maybe he is somebody you say like, no, 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 stick with the small films for now. I think that that's what he's going to do. I think he's going to go back and do yeah. that. This is, this is again, why I love the, the live chat and the comments in general, too. For you guys, all the movie fans out there, answer these. As you hear Ashley read them off, Fire into the comments section what you guys are thinking. Like I said, you got Josh Trank in there, um, Steven Spielberg's 1941. I would the, go back and and uh, and tap Frank Darabont and be like, dude, I think the script that you have for the Indiana Jones 4 is awesome. <laughs> Let's railroad that through. How do we push that through right. and not let Crystal Skull happen? You well, know, that's, that like, was Lucas, man. That was all no, Lucas. I know. Yeah. So we have to figure Ooh, it out. You know what I do? I'd go back to last Thursday and tell Alex Preuss to not open a Facebook account. <laughs> 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 all right, next, please. All right, David Michael writes, Hi, guys. The Notebook, it's a classic, but I've always thought A Walk to Remember was very underrated. Thoughts? Is that the yeah. Keanu Reeves one? No, I don't watch it's with Mandy, Mandy Moore. Moore. Yeah. I, don't watch any of those, I don't watch any of those kid romance movies. Oh, my whatever. gosh. It was great. It was a great movie. Tell me about it. It made me want to cry. Mandy Moore's character but had you didn't cancer. Because you're soulless? No, I cry, oh. definitely. Oh, okay. I cried up okay. a storm. Um, the Notebook, I think, is just a little bit more mature. A Walk to Remember is just a little bit younger okay. it, but it's basically they go on a walk right and it's more memorable than other walks that you might have in no a day. they fall in love and then mandy moore dies of cancer whoa oh, really? spoiler oh my gosh jeez oh. i haven't seen the movie whoa. yet but it, it will pull at the heartstrings damn right it will so is the notebook well, like not something anymore. about it won't i'll know the ending the notebook no, is like they open the notebook cry. and it's like yeah. goes you go through time and kill hitler what is that about did she oh get cancer gosh. on the walk like if she didn't go on the walk would she not have contracted Wait, is that when she discovers it yeah oh gosh did she get the call when she was like turning the, the no, corner um, uh, no she knew it she, she didn't want them to fall in love I don't want to give away the whole movie you're too late right. next just question did. hey I'm having a great time walking with you Jake hang on let me take this call real quick oh my god my world's no, ending no they didn't want to fall in love but then he did because he couldn't help himself and she was like no please don't fall in love with me is Yahoo that. serious in that what? Nothing. All right. Excellent. <laughs> okay. That's young Frankenstein. Oh, no, Einstein. wait. Young Einstein. Oh, yeah. All right. El Miyoko writes, what's worse, a movie that doesn't live up to expectations or a movie that's awful, but you already knew it would be? I think the expectations. Yeah, I think expectations. Because awful, you know, you're just like, ah. That's so what I thought it was going to be. It, right. was a, it was a piss box. But, uh, you know, when you get a movie that you hope is going to be really good. and Because, look, I'll tell you right now, when I saw the Green Lantern uh, Comic-Con, trailer right. they just had that comic-con trailer that came out and it, was, and it got leaked and released and i was like this movie looks awesome it was a cut really well and then i remember going in there going Ugh. right if it just it the smell just, a lot of clouds it's still it's still yeah. there um and i just think that when you are really hyped up for something and you psych yourself up sometimes if you really you do a disservice to the movie like if you if you're so up here and even if the movie is like there right. then that that hurts you so i think it's it's definitely expectations i agree 100 percent expectations if you like that's what happens when you see a trailer a series of trailers all these you have these incredible things in your mind of what you think the movie should be as opposed to just seeing the film and letting the movie tell you what it is right. you bring all this baggage with you and if it doesn't hit all those those uh, numbers in your head you walk away and you have this expectation that's been not satisfied. Henceforth, it's like the expectation of like, I was happy I didn't have that many expectations for Deadpool, especially with all the viral marketing. I was like, look, it's just gonna be a fun film. 
I don't think it can beat this viral marketing because I've enjoyed that so much. And it did because I didn't really know what they were going to do. The trailers were just yep. well cut enough where I didn't really they didn't reveal too much of the story. You're like, ah, oh, here's three or four action set pieces. So I think it's I love to go into a movie as blank as possible. Yeah, it's weird because like in sports, I want to have my heart broken because that means at least my team got close to winning. Like I'd rather do that than get blown out. But in movie terms, no, I would much rather have Sex in the City 2 than Batman Forever because Batman Forever is one. I was like, this is going to be amazing. Sex in the City 2, I knew I was probably going to walk out before the movie got halfway through, <laughs> and I was fine with that. I don't right. like getting my heart broken when it comes to cinema. Right? Yeah, it seems like you guys are saying the same thing. It's expectations. Um, yeah, okay, what's next? Anurag Bhattacharya. Sorry, I totally just butchered your name. What if you, what, if you, what if you didn't? What if you nailed it? What if I nailed Anurag it? Anurag Bhattacharya. I should have just, gone, should have just <laughs> gone with it. All right. They write, what are your views on movies continuing as TV series? Case in point, Limitless. Uh, I think it depends on the movie. I think there's certain movies that there's more to tell. And then I think sometimes when you get something like when they did the Ferris Bueller TV show. and Ooh, those, yeah, the, like the Clueless TV show. Yeah, there's there's times when they just do it to capitalize. And right. there's times to do it when you can tell a story. And yeah. I think Animal that, House, the TV series starring Flounder. No one watched it. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, yeah that's oh true. Oh, my God. That was a thing. That. Wow. Uh. Yeah, so I think that it's a matter of there. if, if uh, there's certain times that I would love to see movies that are made into it. TV series because there are more, like look something to me I'm glad was a TV series and they brought it back first as a TV series because now they're doing a movie it was Battlestar Galactica when sure on Moore's I think that that could have they could have had someone go let's make a movie because remember I think the Sopranos was originally they they want when David Chase pitched it they were like oh make this a movie he's like I can't do this as a movie I gotta do it as a series so when there's enough of a story to tell I like to see it go down that way Mark uh yeah I mean I'm looking at a list and uh most of them are not very good they they, they tried a live action Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure on Fox in the early 90s yeah. that was like that's that's not gonna work but something like Limitless it, it's a cool premise and it does lend itself I think even better than I like the movie a lot but like if you're telling that story in a you know episodic kind of fashion I think it might work out better so there's some great examples again this is why the, the fans are giving some great ones here uh, Stargate was one that worked definitely um, Fargo you look at Fargo now wow Fargo is Fargo's a great, great example. example that's yeah. a, one of the greatest examples thank you fan whoever yeah. wrote can that we, can we throw Bates Motel kind of gets in there mm. oh, yeah. you know what I haven't it's, seen it yet you know, but I've heard that. everyone prequel, who's watched it said it's great yeah it was but. Tyler Myers who wrote Fargo uh, Fargo uh, is yep. I have to say watching Fargo both seasons has been like the biggest treat for myself and Holly we love watch it's like watching a mini movie every week yeah. It's such Great, a huh? well-made series. Watch it. yeah. You could say it's been a walk to remember. Ooh, oh. I don't want to say that. I want to say also I want to say Hannibal, where they took the Silence of the Lambs, they took back the character from the books, and they made a TV series. Brian Fuller did an incredible job doing Hannibal. Yeah. All right, let's do two more. All right, Gabriel Bailey writes, any updates on the Scorsese film Silence with Adam Driver, Andrew Garfield, and Liam Neeson? Just that it's coming out. That's all. I mean, I, it's, I think they're priests, right? And they're going to Japan. And yes, that's the, like that. the loose premise. <laughs> this is where we're at, though, so far this, with us. Every single time we brought this movie up, you have gone, I think that's the one in Japan. <laughs> no, no, but this time I added the Catholic priest you situation. Right? It's, it's, so. it's evolved. It's <laughs> this evolved. is how I tease movies. I don't give you everything yeah. right off the bat. Right. We're, 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 I can tell you this that we're probably going to be talking about it come Oscar time. Yeah. All I can say is I'm really worried about it. No, no, no you're not. <clears throat> right. Silence is an upcoming historical drama film directed by Scorsese and uh, the film stars Garfield Driver. Liam Neeson's also nice. in it. Why did you have that, that weird accent, Mark? I don't know. Yeah. Why were you reading yeah. it with that weird accent? Yeah, yeah, you gave yeah. up right through it. Yeah. I will find you. All right, next. All right, Samuel Wetz writes, favorite dark comedy? Dark, I'll tell you what, I don't know if it's my favorite, but you brought it up yesterday, and I think that it's completely underrated and that everybody should watch it, Death to Smoochie. It's oh, yes, a, it is, Death to Smoochie is an amazing it, dark it comedy. It really is. You know what's another great dark comedy? Brazil, Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Okay. I mean, a lot of people don't find it funny because it's so horrifying, but it is a dark comedy. I think that movie freaked people out because yeah. they were like, oh, the Monty Python guy, he's directing uh, a movie yeah. called Brazil. This is going to be hilarious. Uh -huh. And well, it was very, very Why different. is everyone to it being tortured to death? Yeah. I am going to throw uh, a movie with uh, Christian Slater, Daniel Stern, Jeremy Piven, I think, is in it. Uh, very bad things oh, yeah. about a trip to Vegas gone yep. very, very, very wrong. It's hard to watch straight through all the way until the end, but there's some really comedic, dark moments in there. I'll um, throw in With Nail and I as well. Even though it's not comedy comedy, it is incredibly funny and incredible. Incredibly rewatchable. Fans are throwing out Cable Guy, Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two. That, yeah, Evil yeah. Dead. Evil two? Dead. The first one is not a comedy. Evil right. Dead Two and an Army of Darkness. Yes, are comedy. yes. Boondock Saints, um, American Psycho. I guess you can kind of say it's yeah, yeah. that's yeah, true. That's definitely. Um, all right, let's let's do one more. One more. Okay. 
Okay, cool, right? Since the new Ghostbusters trailer comes out tomorrow, what do you guys want to see in it? Mark, why don't you take this one? Because I think you're the most excited for this one. Yeah, out of man, yeah. I just want to laugh a lot. And I want to feel like I'm back in the Ghostbusters universe, albeit a new one that never had the original male Ghostbusters that we have come to know and appreciate. I want this thing to make me feel nostalgic, but not rest on the laurels of the old Ghostbusters. Sell us on this new team and their chemistry. I want to laugh a lot. I want to see some cool action. Maybe get like a goat. Maybe if you want to throw Slimer in there, I don't think I need to see like Bill Murray or Dan Aykroyd actually make a cameo in the trailer. I want to see Leslie Jones, Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wiig, and Melissa McCarthy be hysterical in it. Maybe Slimer. Yeah, look, I, lo I love Paul Feig. I think that what he's done with Spy and Bridesmaids, I'm a big fan. And I've, I've said it many times on this show as well, too. I would have rather seen a, a continuation of the universe than to reboot the whole thing. And, and I don't know if somebody's going to be a Vankman or not. But that being said, I hope that it changes my opinion. I hope that when I see this movie, I get a lot of laughs out of it. I didn't like that silly teaser that they did for it. I thought it was unnecessary. Just give me the trailer when you give me the trailer. Um, and the thing was like three weeks ago. But that being said, I want to see this cast that has worked together. There's there's new people who haven't. I want to see how they all vibe together because that was what made the first Ghostbusters so special. Is yeah. that all these comedic forces came together and it was this great team of, of Ghostbusters and comedians and a great director. So I'm very, very curious to see what this new version looks like. The streams will cross. I am very excited <laughs> to see this new team of Ghostbusters. I, I like the idea of breathing a brand new life into it. It's not, it's, it is a reboot, but it's not. I will, you know, we'll find out more about it as we see the trailer but i'm excited to see all four of these hilarious ladies and see how they interact and that's what i want is to see how how funny are they going to be playing off of each other while they're fighting the ghosts yeah i think it's so. safe to assume that once that trailer comes out you can see a trailer reaction slash review right here on collider's yeah. youtube channel that is very true all right guys that's our show today i'd like to thank the crew on the table first mr john schnepp where can i find you hey you guys can follow me on twitter and instagram just at john schnepp and you can support me by trying to check out this brand new trailer that's on Kickstarter. It's called Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd. It's a brand new feature film that I'm making. Donate if you want to help me make this film. It's all about comic book movies and comic books. And how about the war with Finstock? What's happening? Give us the, oh, the war with Finstock. Finstock just donated $75,000 and then took it back. So <laughs> I love the really Twitter war. The Twitter war you guys are getting yeah, into. Right? Uh, me and Finstock, I, I, it's coming up pretty soon. I think we're going to be uh, battling it out in a couple weeks. I yeah, think, we right? think so. Yeah, yeah we'll, have, so, we'll have announcements as far yeah, as all the I, can, I think he's, you know, he's trying to... You know, He's trying to catch up. He's watching a lot of movies, doing a lot of Wikipedia searches, sweating it out. I'm doing nothing just because I'm yeah. going to win. So. I, I think that is going to be our first murder yeah. on the show. Uh, Mark Ellis, where can they find you? It's going to be a flatliner situation, except he ain't coming back to life. Uh, you know, speaking of trailers you want to watch online, I am about to tweet out a teaser trailer for a movie that's got a great cast. It's an independent film, and it happens to have this guy kind of not really starring in it, but I am going to be in the movie. So I'm in a movie coming up. I'm going to tweet you guys information, not only how you can check out the trailer, but also how you can donate to the campaign if you so choose. You can find me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live, and I will be at the Comedy Store in L.A. this weekend. Make sure also that you check out Mark and Ashley doing their Finding Dory review. That link is actually in the description of this video right now. And speaking of Miss Mova, where can I find you? On Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy Wednesday, guys. And for me, you can find me at Christian Harloff, both Twitter and Instagram. And make sure, another thing that we made sure that we put the Schmoes No movie channel uh, in this description as well, too. We just announced the return of our live show. There's a video that is telling exactly when that is. Please go and watch that if you want to go find out exactly when the live show is debuting. We are also doing the Schmoes. I'm very excited for that to come back and the John Campia versus Dan Merrill match is very very close I can't wait for that make sure you check out Jedi Council check out Heroes check out all of our shows here we have a lot of exciting things the Empire Strikes Back commentary coming very very soon thank you for joining us guys make sure that you also tweet out at Collider Video share this with your friends tell all your movie fans we're working on the mobile issue we promise we'll be back tomorrow Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.